Okay guys, welcome back to another episode of Robo CNC. I'm Marcel. Today a follow-up video on the previous one and a little bit of extra talking about the design we're going to go with uh, with the Robo CNC X2 router. Um, our new DIY uh, built CNC machine um, and with, with some improved design elements uh, when you look at my old router so uh, we're going to talk uh, where this design comes from uh, why we went for this design and uh, some things that will be uh, coming up also i have some questions uh, uh, for you guys so we will be uh, i will be asking them and if you have some advice for me just share and uh, well let's hop into it first of all um, we went uh, for the item profiling so last time we did some welding on the frame and uh, stuff like that um, these item profiles are yeah well not really cheap but they are extremely sturdy and extremely uh, rigid um, so that's why we went for the these uh, profiles this time this bridge profile with the the frame all together is about 120 kilograms so it's quite uh, quite rigid um, the biggest design change on this machine is the gantry style on my previous video the gantry um, we had we had the bed and we had a real big gantry style so basically we have some real long vertical walls and these vertical walls can vibrate very easily. They can do like this motion. It's not really visible to the, to the, to the eye, but when you're machining um, like aluminum, for instance, this vibration can, uh, well, will go into the milling motor and in the, in the end mill. And well, that can give chatter and broken end mills and stuff like that. So. Not a real big problem because you can do your work just more slowly. Just take your uh, depth passes uh, a little bit more shallow. When I was building the previous machine, I also documented the build and I showed the drawings and I was uh, um, showing it on the Dutch CNC zone forum. Basically, I was doing the build in 2008, I think. Um, and basically, from the first day I was documenting it, one guy uh, on the forum, uh, he was called Ari Kabalstra. Um, his real name is Jan Binnendijk. I will, uh, I will link in the screen uh, to his YouTube channel. <coughs> he told me not to go with the big portal style because of the vibrations and all the stuff that, uh, that comes with, uh, with that or the problems that comes with that design. And he had showed us a design on the forum way, way back and that was basically the design i'm now going with so uh, jan thank you again for uh, showing us uh, your uh, your design uh, back then and basically uh, he was working at uh, daman cnc i uh, i think um, and basically DamanCNC.com, where i get a lot of my stuff from they also have a, um, a cnc kit that you can buy which really looks similar like this one because I was looking at it and I uh, took all the things I liked about it and implemented them in my design. Um, basically the biggest thing for this design, the best improvement for, I guess, is this really short um, side. There's no wiggling like, like this um, in a bridge uh, gantry like like this it, it's just not possible but of course this would result in no room to put your material so when doing so we went for this design so this is where the bed is going to be this is going to be the bed um, and on the sides we put some profiles upright and this is a real rigid solution this is not going to move anything this is going to be sturdy like uh, anything else so 
it's also not going to move it's just sitting on the complete box frame um, and that's that's what I think is going to be uh, the biggest improvement in uh, in the machine so and now one of the questions I have uh, for you guys to think with me or uh, for some guys who have already uh, done stuff like this um, I'm going to place aluminum profiling uh, t-slot profiling as the machine bed still not sure if I'm doing the right thing uh, by doing so because uh, the wooden bed is uh, quite practical also for a lot of stuff um, but maybe I will make some modular pieces or something um, the aluminum profile I'm going to use is this item profile it's basically a bed profile it's really flat uh, from itself and it has the t-slots in them um, and I can easily mount it on the the frame base the, 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 the bottom frame I have not yet checked um, with with uh, uh, the z-axis how flat the box frame the bottom frame is at the moment I will do so and I will document it and, and make a video by placing um, an indicator on the z-axis and checking the frame on every place um, and checking the z height basically <coughs> but what are the chances that everything is within um, a hundredth of a millimeter or something the chances are quite low I guess so um, I will have to find something to flat, uh, flatten out the bed and with a wooden bed it's, it's quite easy because I just place the bed on the on the machine and then use the machine itself to straighten it all out flatten it make it uh, make it flat by fly cutting it or something like uh, like uh, like that so resurfacing the bed but I really really do not want to do this with this profile because this profile as you can see has a really nice uh, top side which is anodized uh, an anodized layer uh, protects it from uh, protects it uh, against rust and it's it's really hard and uh, well it looks quite nice also so I really would like to keep the anodization uh, layer on top of this so if I want to flatten something um, I will have to assume this profile to be already um, flat from itself but I will have to I think I have to place something between these profiles these two uh, well four actually before I put this on top of it I was, think, I was thinking about placing a thin layer of uh, a plastic of, of some sort on this, uh, on this frame flatten that layer and then place these bed profiles on top of them but um, if you have any idea a better better way to do so of, or have you done this before just let me know in the comment section below because uh, well for me this is the first time also so uh, well maybe you guys have done this before so that's that for the machine bed so the next thing I want to talk about is the drive of the x-axis I'm going to uh, call the x-axis this direction so the 1500 uh, millimeter side of this machine um, normally I basically use uh, ball screws uh, rotating ball screws uh, to drive an axis which is I think the best way to go but if you have an axis axis of uh, more than one meter let's say one meter you get wobbly axis it's just the, the the ball screw it's it's long it's heavy and with a small piece of vibration in it it's going to wobble um, on high speeds it's it's going to so there are a lot of uh, options to go with some people are making supports for the shaft itself the um, the ball screw some uh, make a really complex system with a rotating ball nut and a stationary ball screw which is also amazing um, 
And a lot of people go with a rack and pinion style. Well, basically I'm going to go with a rack and pinion style, but not the real basic one. So basically I have uh, this rack, which is going to be on both sides of the machine. Like so, like this. And most of the times you see um, a stepper motor with a pinion gear uh, put into this uh, rack, but it has a lot of slack, a lot of uh, uh, backlash in it, which we don't want, of course. Well, sometimes you see people using a spring and, and uh, taking the pinion gear uh, straight into the, the rack, but well, me most mechanics uh, that are watching this video know that it does not, should not be like that. They should not take the pinion and drive it up to the, uh, to the rack because there's a lot of friction and there's a lot of uh, um, uh, problems ahead with, uh, well, the, met the metal rubbing uh, against each other all the time. So normally a gear is just pushing to one teat. Well, I have bought this unit, which uh, will be uh, shown in a, an upcoming video, or the build of this unit will be shown in an upcoming video. But basically, here is going to be a stepper motor. This is going to be, uh, this is the um, reduction gear to reduce the speed and also uh, to make an angler um, angler movement and on this side we see two pinion gears and these two pinion gears are going to be mounted inside the rack and they are going to give us a zero backlash uh, system or at least a very very low backlash system so more to come on this in uh, in an upcoming video i will show uh, all the part numbers for it um, where i got it um, how to assemble it how it works and it will how it will be mounted on the machine so more in a, in an upcoming video coming soon so having talked about uh, the drive system of the x-axis um, you probably wonder what are you going to use for the y-axis well y-axis will be this motion and basically this is less than one meter of length so best option for me um, is a ball screw i am going to use this ball screw and it basically is going to be mounted like so on top of the gantry um, not going to in the, uh, go into this uh, quite yet uh, simple system we'll be talking about it in an upcoming video so y-axis ball screw okay the z-axis questions about the z-axis um, well first of all what are these slots for and uh, all these bolt holes um, well Basically, I want to make this machine quite versatile. So um, most of the time there's going to be uh, sitting a, a spindle on it, just a milling motor, HF, um, which is going to be attached on this plate. So on this side will be mounted to the milling motor. On this side you see there's a, rough, uh, a key and well, same applies for the front plate of the z-axis so i can basically place this and it's aligned by the key so i can uh, put some bolts in it and i can start machining if i want to take anything else on the machine like an oscillating spindle knife or whatever a laser or a 3d printer uh, head i will basically take off this plate Put a different one on and with the key it should be aligned uh, to the rest of the machine quite easily so the other question are these i told um, when building this z-axis that it's going to be a floating z-axis um, not sure if it's going to work but basically if i loosen these two uh, bolts the uh, this plate can slide down uh, about two centimeters or a, a bit less but <laughs> and this plate will just drop down on its own weight 
Um, so I can drive the z-axis up and down uh, if I want to, but when it touches the bottom, it will go up the two centimeters because it can. Yeah, it has this freedom of movement. Of course, normally when machining stuff, you would not want that. But um, uh, for instance, something is a bit wobbly, uh, a material uh, like so. Um, I could loosen these bolts, basically, put something around the cutter, like a, a, a Delrin cup to uh, make sure that the Delrin cup and the cutter have a, uh, a standard distance. So the cutter is, for instance, one millimeter below the Delrin cup. The Delrin cup will go on top of the material and can follow the wobbly motion of the, of the material. Um, and, and the engravement, the engraving will be one millimeter of depth everywhere. At least that's what, uh, what I'm hoping to. And uh, if it's not working, we'll just fix these up and uh, never talk about it. So that's basically uh, it about the floating Z-axis. Um, of course, we will be demonstrating it when it's, uh, when it's done. But uh, for now, um, I think this is it. This is what I wanted uh, to talk about uh, in this video, show you where we're at. And uh, well, now we can go uh, to the next step which will probably be the assembly of the, the rack and pinion system. So, uh, well, hope you will, uh, will like that video too. If you like the video, thumbs up. Um, if you have uh, any advice, questions, just leave them uh, down below. Um, again, I had a question about the machining bed. So if you have any tips on that one, just uh, please share it with me. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.